response was the classic deer in the headlights, look of fear and horror. Um, here was this teacher who at the time was nicknamed Monster by his teachers, uh, by his students rather. And, and this Monster's unspoken message was, welcome to Webb School, Mr. Martin. You are already behind. Um, as it turned out, Paul was admitted to Webb late in the summer. His reading requirement was waived. Uh, but neither Paul nor I knew that at the time. Uh, that was the beginning of his web experience, and um, he did more than survive his beginnings. Um, once he navigated his way through his early days and those early bumps in the road, um, he went on to have two very successful years at web. Uh, and, and I would say following that web road or the web way or whatever we want to call it, um, in his later years he's traveled along uh, the very road to success that is that his classmates had predicted. After, after Webb, he earned a bachelor's degree in public policy from Vanderbilt in 1992. He attended the University of Miami School of Law and earned his law degree in 1995. While in law school, he interned with the National Transportation Safety Board and the U.S. Justice Department, dealing with aviation law issues. Paul is a lawyer and a lobbyist for State Farm. He recently published a book called Racing for Impact, a practical guide to preparing for disasters. He has practiced law in Tennessee, Florida, and Texas as an insurance defense attorney in private practice and as in-house counsel for State Farm. He joined State Farm in 2000 after five years in private practice handling insurance defense and aviation law matters. In addition to his legal responsibilities at State Farm, Paul has served as legal counsel to State Farm's crisis management team. Paul and his family currently live in Austin, Texas. Please join me in welcoming Paul Martin Class of 1988. Thanks, guys. Good to be here this morning. Um, as Ron said, I grew up down the road, and so anytime I come back to Europe, it's a true like coming home today. In fact, they have my parents here as well. They sent both me and my brother here many years ago. I was told when I came to Europe, and we're setting this up, that I'm supposed to regale you with stories of the Class of 88. I'm not going to do that. Um, my senior year, uh, I sat on the fourth row, right where that seat is empty. I guess we keep that seat empty now on purpose because that was my seat. We keep that seat empty now. I sat there, and there was a gentleman here who was an alum. He was an older gentleman. I think he knew Sonny. I don't know. And he starts telling the stories from way back when about all the silly pranks they played and how they had to run to Foster Village back when they got in trouble. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I think I had a test that morning or something, and I'm thinking, dude, Nobody cares. Sit down. <laughs> and I'm sure you're so much more respectful than the class of 88. Class of 88 was known for a lot of things. Being respectful and being the academic powerhouse that you folks are, that wasn't us. We were a little different. And so I made a promise that day that if I ever spoke in chat, I wasn't going to tell stories about why uh, things that we did, because the stories you tell, the things you do, are so much better now. So let's talk about why I'm here. Uh, early in the school year, uh, the decision was made to put a siren, a woo-woo, on top of the building. <laughs> you like the woo-woo? I see this, and as Ron alluded to, I, had, uh, I worked on the crisis management team for State Farm uh, for the Texas operations. Anytime we have a tornado, tsunami, hurricane, workplace violence, whatever, I'm on the team that helps solve that problem for our company. And so I get really excited when I see people taking responsibility for their own well-being. And so I called up the school and I said, I think what I said was, is there any way I can buy the naming rights to the siren? You know, because people buy the naming rights to a building, they buy the naming rights to the football stadium that we need. Remember we want the skyboxes from the alumni? Um, hopefully we'll get here soon. Uh, I said, I want to buy the naming rights to the siren. I didn't know if that was even possible. So we started talking about it, and so I became the sponsor of the siren. Now, because I'm sponsor of the siren, that gives me a lot of authority uh, to issue edicts. And so this morning, I'm issuing a, a directive to all of you as well as to the administrations of the faculty. From now on, anytime the siren goes off, for whatever reason, earthquake, nuclear attack, gas trees, students from Cascade rioting on campus, I don't know. <laughs> for whatever reason, we will now collectively refer to that as a code call. <laughs> That is a code call. If you're downtown and you hear the siren go off, some of the locals say, hey, what's that siren? What's that mean? You say, well, that, yeah, that's a code call. <laughs> and they say, well, should we be scared? Oh, yes, you should be very scared. <laughs> go hide in the bathroom, push a 
simple all your hands or whatever it takes. Go small and fast. Right? So when one these days you get to be alone, you can come back to your thoughts and you should get issues things like this. Now I know you're a skeptical group because all web students are skeptical, is the way you are. And so to make it official, that we're gonna call it this, last week I sent an entry to the Urban Dictionary and put code call in there. Referencing the web school in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. <laughs> I've had really good luck getting other things uh, entered into the early dictionary. I know this will go as well, so in a week or so you should see this. I'm sure the folks in the admissions and recruiting are thrilled to know that now the Urban Dictionary is yet another recruiting tool for the web school. <laughs> uh, Ron alluded earlier to the book that I wrote called Racing Brick that I just got published um, last year. And I, there's a copy of it, I had a copy sent and put it to the library, because I'm quite sure that on a daily basis, at least one of you asked one of your classmates, if I were to open a law firm, how would I protect that law firm from the possibility of a wide variety of disasters? I know you talk about these things all the time. And so I wanted you to have this resource. But because Uncle Paul always brings good things to students, I'm issuing you a second edict this morning. If you read the entire book, I think it's like 130 something pages, if you read the entire book, you are exempt from all supplemental reading read requirements for an entire semester. <laughs> read the book, no more reading outside the class for an entire semester. This, I think this will be a very popular book uh, in the coming days. So I want to talk to you about some of the cutting edge scientific research I've done and what terrifies you people. As you can see from this awesome pie chart that I've created, 5% of you are worried about a financial collapse. 8% of you are worried about tornadoes. Where are my tornado people? One, a oh, few, okay. No tornadoes today, relax. Not going to happen, at least not today. 4% uh, of you are worried about earthquakes. 3% of you are worried about terrorism. And using your awesome web school math ninja skills, I'm sure you've already deduced, that leaves 80% of you. 80% of you are worried about one thing and one thing only. Anybody want to guess what that is? No. No. Quarterly evacuation drills at the World Trade Center. He required every employee to 
of Morgan Stanley to go down a hundred something flights of stairs every four times a year. His employer, his boss, wanted to fire him because he was so annoyed at having to go down all those stairs four times a year. 9-11 happened. The owner of the building told people to stay in the building, everything is fine, nothing to worry about. Restorla ignored that advice, took his people outside. He gets outside, he realizes he still has Morgan Stanley employees trapped in the building. Against better judgment, he goes back in. He was seen as high as the 72nd floor before the building collapsed and never found his remains. Now, here's the remarkable thing about this, guys. 7,200, 2,700 employees, 2,700 employees of Morgan Stanley. On 22 different floors in the World Trade Center, only 13 Morgan Stanley employees died. And as tragic as that, as that is, that is remarkable. To only have that few employees die. And it's all because of his willingness not to be caught unprepared. Back home, I teach a lot of defensive handgun classes, including a class for a Texas, Texas concealed handgun license. And one of the things I like to tell my students is something that I picked up from the instructor a few years ago. And that is this all you have on you is all you have. All you have on you is all you have. Whatever you have in your pockets, whatever you ladies have in your purses, Whatever you've got between your ears, that is all we have to deal with an emergency right now until help arrives. Okay? We have to be more like Rick Riscorla and start taking responsibility for our own well-being. Uh, anybody here from Texas? One, two. God bless you. Aggies, Longhorns? Diego Maggie. Okay, well, let's help you out. Uh, we had tornadoes in Dallas, Fort Worth. Had about a dozen tornadoes earlier this month. It took two hours for EMS to reach some of those people. Dallas Fort Worth is like one large city, okay? And yet, despite all the resources they had, it took two hours to get an ambulance to help those folks. How long do you think it's going to take for multiple ambulances to get out here to Bellbuckle, Tennessee, if we have a major disaster? It's going to take a while. We have to be ready to deal with the problem ourselves until help arrives. So, I want you to do three things. First thing I want you to do the rest of this week, when you're not adjusting your toga. By the way, the young man with the garbage bag toga, where is he? Stand up. Stand up. Stay <laughs> standing. Look at me. Look at me. Game ball, you son. I like that. That's creativity. That's learning to use the rules to your advantage. I like it.
more likely. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You are not at Webb to be prepared for college. That is not Webb's function. Webb's function is to build leaders. Leaders in the community, leaders in the business world, leaders in your houses of worship, leaders in your schools. That's what we're here to do. We need you to take what you are learning when you leave Webb, be the leaders that will make our country better. We're facing a lot of challenges right now. I know you guys have read the news. You know, some of you will be entering the job market in a few years. Things are very unique, to say the least. We need you to be the leaders moving forward. Um, you know, guys, I pray for you every day. I pray that you'll have intellectual honesty, follow truth, wherever it is. I am really proud of every one of you. And it's my hope that as you move forward, that you will elect to be the winner for sport. And I know I talked about the mercy of preparedness, and that's all well and good. I want to expand my scope just a little bit. Find what motivates you. Find what makes you happy. And you be the rip or squirrel of that mission. Guys, people are going to laugh at you. They're going to dismiss you just like they did the rip or squirrel. Don't let them get you down. When you find out what that is, you be the rip or squirrel of that mission. And don't ever stop pursuing one motivation. Okay? Alright. Um, proud of all of you. Makes me feel a little old putting up here. In fact, all my classmates were online. And they said, what's it like to do a chapel talk? And if you'll permit me, I'm going to take your picture standing up here to strike fear in their hearts. I'll still have fear. This is what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, give me that phone. <laughs> Sorry. I'll stay. Uh, I'm going to say that. It is so important that you learn the lessons here, not just about immersion and care, that you learn the lessons here about leadership, about courage, about honor as you move forward. God bless you. Peace I was told to leave a couple minutes for questions. I don't know if you have any. I'll stick around. I'll talk to you about being a lawyer, going to law school, being a lobbyist, mercy stuff. Anybody want to throw out a question now? Yes, ma'am. So, it's an emergency happening right now. We have a Flashlight? <laughs> Sovereign goes off, what do we call that? 